God has blessed us with another day of life, and I am so thankful to, to see another day, and I know you are too. We are, all must praise God because he has been good to each and every one of us. And I would like to personally thank each one of you for your participation in the Kenya Fund that you have been sending there. As we can see through the email, uh, well, this email that I received uh, this morning from my brother Tom, 18 souls have been baptized, so praise the Lord. And that's some of the work that we do and we have participated in and, and we should all be thankful and, and praise the Lord. We know the angels in heaven are rejoicing at this time. So I just say it's really good job. So at this time, we're gonna go into our lesson. I just wanna give a, a quick prayer, okay? Brothers and sisters, we humbly approach the throne of God, his grace and his mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for just being our God and for all the blessings you have given each and every one of us. We have come before your throne of grace to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we ask, Father, that you will bless our efforts as we go to this platform, Zoom, that we will be able to understand the message that will be presented to us and that we will be able to apply these things to our lives and that we will be able to do the work that is set forth for us in your kingdom. We ask Heavenly Father that you would be with each one of us as we look to you for guidance, understanding, and peace of mind as we go through the situations in our life. It would mean that I might be able to say something that might encourage us to come up continue to be guided by you and that we can continue to do your will. This is our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, everyone can agree with me that this pandemic and everything else that's going on in 2020 can be stressful. Fear and anxiety about this disease and what can happen and how overwhelming everything is can cause strong emotions in children and in adults and in adults. Public health actions such as social distancing can make people feel isolated and lonely and can increase stress and anxiety. However, these actions are necessary to reduce the spread of the COVID-19. Coping with stress in a healthy way will help you and help people around you and help you to be a stronger, and it could be, allow you to be safer and stronger. Get my stuff together. Stress during this infectious disease and this outbreak can sometimes cause the following fear and worry about your own health and the health of your loved ones, your financial situation, your job, or the loss of support services that you rely on, changes in sleep or eating patterns, difficult in sleeping and concentrating, worsen, worsening of chronic health problems, worsening of health conditions, increase in tobacco and alcohol substance, we know what people fall off of the wagon sometime with this stressful situation that we are in. If you are a family member, need help coping with everything that's going in two thousand that's going on in 2020, you should make time to unwind. Try to do some activities that you enjoy. Connect with other people. Talk to people that you trust about your concerns and feelings. Connect with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Spend more time studying God's word. If you need help, get help. Don't feel like you are alone. When I personally feel pressure and stress, I worked in the electronic field for over 40 years and it could be very stressful. So when I was in those stressful situations, I used to take walks, I used to jog, and I used to go out and see nature. 
I love to see God's creation. And I love to clear my mind of all the problems and stressful things that, that I might encounter during the days that I, I was at work. I still take that practice now since I have retired. Praise the Lord. But I, I still do that. I still jog and I still take walks. Several months ago, as I was warming up to walk in my favorite areas where I go up in the hills, an elderly gentleman, older gentleman, was walking by and he and behind him was a dog. And I was, I said to the, the man, I said, good morning, sir. He said, good morning. As the dog got closer, I noticed that the dog was old. You could tell when dogs were old. And I was looking at the dog and there was something peculiar about his eyes. And the old man, he looked at me and seen how I was looking at the dog and he said, my buddy is blind. I said, wow. He said that a couple of years ago, the dog had a tumor and had some health problems and he became blind after all that. So as the dog walked by, the man was giving him commands, come buddy, come. And the dog was following his voice because he could not see. About two weeks ago, I was out on the same trail and I was thinking about this lesson that I was going to do. And I seen the, the older gentleman and that dog on the same trail walking along. And I said, wow, the dog is still hanging in there and the man is still leading him. I was thinking to myself that that man is taking good care of that dog. And I was thinking about in the past when the, the older man was young and the dog might have been a puppy, how energetic that dog was and how he must have had fun with the owner, chasing the ball and chasing sticks and, you know, doing the buddy friendship type stuff that they, you know, that they do. And I thought about that dog in his old age and all the problems that he have now. I thought about the things that, that, all, that the man was providing for the dog. He was providing food, shelter, guidance. And I know that dog. I know the man loved that dog. And he promised that he would take care of that dog. It reminded me of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything, there's a season, a time for everything under the sun. And also remind me of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth before difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure. I understand that that's referring to humans and, and our situation as we get older and stuff, but I was, couldn't help but think about that dog and, and the older man because that's the situation that they were in. But we know God will provide for all of our needs. He will take care of us and will give us everything that we need to sustain us in life. As I started my jog, I noticed the field and the hills and, and the rabbits and the squirrels all around me that I was, as I was running. And this passage came in mind. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on. Is life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? So do not worry about clothing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, us, O ye of little faith? For, for, the, for after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But first, 
seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Significant is the day. Those passages, that passage right there is very powerful within itself. It's telling us that God will take care of us. God will take care of all of our needs. If you want to put a title on this lesson, it will be entitled, God Will Take Care of You. God will take care of you. And as I was walking doing my jog, I couldn't help but remember the scripture that was read because it's so powerful within itself. And we all know what it says. It's Psalm 23. This is a Psalm of David. Psalm, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup run over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David, he knew all about being a shepherd as we look at this passage right here, because he was a shepherd boy when he was young. He knew he had responsibilities to the sheep. He knew that he needed to protect them from danger. He knew that he had to find pasture for them so they can graze and get strong. He knew that he needed to guide them through the still waters. He, need to, he knew he needed to keep them from straying. So David wrote this psalm. It's the psalm of Israel. As he thought about his relationship with God, he made an analogy of a shepherd and a sheep. God was like a shepherd to David, and David was like a sheep to God, like all of us. Even though David wasn't perfect and none of us are, God committed his anointing to David throughout his life. We know that David committed a grievous sin of adultery, deceit, and murder regarding Bathsheba and her husband Uriah. The child of David's union with Bathsheba was taken by God in place of David's life. David still remained the king because of a promise that God had made that David's throne, uh, throne will stand. We find that in 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12, chapter 12. God said regarding David, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to David, my servant, I will establish your seed forever and build your throne to all for all generations. Psalms 89, three and four. The seed or the descendant of David is the seed of Abraham whom God referred when he said to Abraham, and your seed all, all the earth shall be blessed. Genesis chapter two, verse 18. This seed of Abraham would also be the seed of David and would sit on David's throne forever. Second Samuel chapter 13 and 14, Acts 13 and 22. David was said to be a man after God's own heart. That's powerful right there. Even though David committed all those sins, but God forgave him and God promised that he would bless him and that the anointed one will come from his seed, from Abraham's seed. You see, what we have done in the past, God will forgive us and he will take care of us. But it says, first seek the kingdom and his righteousness and all those things will be added to you. We can see that David's earthly throne was a shadow of the throne in heaven, which Jesus said, I have 
sat on David's throne when he sat down on God's throne in heaven. We can see that in Acts chapter 2, verse 29 to 36, and in Revelation chapter 21, or chapter 3 and 21. Jesus Christ is introduced in the New Testament as the son of David. You can see that in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1 as he's the king. The Apostle Paul writes about our Heavenly Father blessing us in the time of our needs and in the time of discomfort. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, 3 to 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. Like I said before, we are in stressful times and we are in difficult times. We need to lean on each other. We as Christians understand that when we experience trouble in our life, God comes alongside of us and comforts us. We then, in return, is able to comfort others because we have learned how to be comforted by God. So we help others, brothers and sisters and people that's not attached to or affiliated with the church, but we know that the field is plentiful. We know that souls are being lost every day and we know that we need to help them. That's how we let our light shine. Because we all are going through troubling times in 2020. Clear, you had 2020, you have a clear vision. So I think most of us have a clear vision of what's going on in this world today because things are being exposed. And that, that's a good thing because if you can see a trap, you can avoid it. If you can see something in your path that is, is distracting, you can walk around it. If you can see things that will cause you problems, you can handle it a different way. So it's a good thing, you know, that things are being exposed, you know, light exposed darkness. And we see things are being exposed through the light. Jesus Christ's relations to his people is often represented by the figure of a shepherd. David had God as a shepherd. David was God's sheep. Jesus Christ is known as the great shepherd. In John chapter 10 and verse 11, 10 and 14, Jesus clearly speaks of himself as the good shepherd who is to give his life for a sheep and who can say, I know my sheep and I am known by my sheep. First seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. We heard Jesus' voice and reacted to it. God will take care of you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21 says, now may the God of peace who brought up, brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work you do according to his will. Working in you what is well-pleasing in the sight to Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. This covenant blood that we talked about, that we talked about, we shared the communion this morning. We shared the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We shared that his death brought life to us. We shared that he did this because he loves us. He did this because it was a plan in place to take care of God's people. We are thankful for that. We are complete in Jesus and in God if we first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on a tree, that we might die to sin, might live for righteousness. By those stripes you are healed, for you were sheep going astray, but now return to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Jesus Christ is overseers of our souls. It's a blessing to be in the body of Christ and in the fear of Christ because 
That's where all spiritual blessing is. We'll talk about that in a moment. But we are experiencing great problems in 2020. And Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 1, 6, 1 through 6, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. And this is what Thomas said. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Jesus Christ said, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except to me. So as we see, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything that we want in the spiritual realm will be added to us. They're all spiritual blessings in the spiritual realm. We must enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many of them go by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, there are few who find it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. There's a wide gate, there's a narrow gate, there's two groups of people, but you must enter through the narrow gate. I'm gonna save that description for another lesson that I'm gonna do. I wanna get more into that because it's a lot that's going on in that passage. So just remember that there are two destinations, one with destruction and one with life, and we must enter through the narrow gate and stay on that road that leads to life. And all those things that we want in, in the spiritual realm will be added to us as we walk the road to, to life. I forgot there's no more slides. <laughs> I didn't push my button, but that's fine. There's no more slides. I, I wanted to put more, but I didn't have time. Anyway, Jesus is the good shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. And, and the chief shepherd appears, it says when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of glory that will not fade away. First Peter chapter five and four. I'm gonna match and robe and crown. If I get a hook in heaven, I'll be happy. If I get a cap in heaven, I'll be, in heaven, I'll be happy. I just want to make it to heaven. But we must follow Jesus. We must follow him. There's a story <coughs> about these two shepherds. One bright morning, they met up on top of this hill. And each shepherd had about 500 sheep apiece. The two shepherds looked down in the valley and they seen plenty, plenty of land pasture for the sheep to graze on and had plenty of water. So as the shepherds went down into the valley, sheep followed them and went down into the valley and they mingled. And all day long, the sheep grazed and did their little sheep thing. They, at the end of the day, before dawn, before the, the break of the day, the two shepherds, they were sitting down and they were talking to each other. And the day passed and they kind of enjoyed each other company. The sheep grazed. So when the shepherds got ready to leave, they got up. One of the shepherds yelled, In Christ! In Christ! The other shepherd, he said, Out of Christ! Out of Christ! The sheep that said, heard, In Christ! Got up and followed the shepherd up the hill. The other sheep followed the other shepherd that was going to the left side. The right side, the sheep followed that shepherd. And as they was walking up there, the sheep were separating themselves, following the master's voice, the shepherd's voice. As they got back up to the top of the hill, they departed. One of the shepherds that was on the right hand said, he seen some sheep that were still grazing in all of that plush grass and 
enjoying this little cheap thing, enjoying his life there, you know, everything that was there, all that he'd seen, that that was all blessings. He didn't notice and he didn't hear a shepherd, but the shepherd got up there and said, in Christ! And the sheep looked up and followed up and went up the hill to look. The other shepherd said, out of Christ! She went to the left and followed that shepherd on that side. One said in Christ, one said out of Christ. We need to follow the one that's in Christ, which is Christ himself. First seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. In conclusion of my statement from my lesson, God will take care of you, but you must first seek that kingdom and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. God has a plan for mankind and that is to follow Jesus, which is the chief shepherd. <clears throat> we talked about the death, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ this morning. We talked about that you have to hear the word and you have to believe that Jesus is the chief shepherd. You have to repent of your sins saying that I was going that way to the left, I was, I was I want to go to the right side where Jesus Christ is going. I want to turn my life around and go to Jesus. You must confess that he is who he say is the chief shepherd. You must believe that. You must confess that he is and he's the master and you will follow him. Then you must be baptized to have all your sins washed away. There's a burial and it is something that we have outward experience that we have in Christ. He puts you in Christ where all the spiritual blessings are, the comfort that we get, the peace that we can get, most of all, the salvation that we get as we are in, placed in the kingdom of God. And, this, and then we have a right relationship with Jesus, with God. If that, if, <clears throat> then after you're baptized, you need to live faithfully unto death. And then God will bless your life and you can meet him on the other side after life is over. So when we have these fears and worries, like it had said in the passages I read earlier, the worry about the day, worry about tomorrow, for the day will take care of itself. The apostles were looking at that present problem that they had and it was causing them distress and problems. But Jesus said, I'm the one going to die. But I go away and prepare a place. So they're looking at this immediate thing, but we need to look at the, what the future has for us that's in Jesus Christ. That mansion robe and that crown that we so want, eager to have. God will bless our life. So if it's your will to be baptized and to be washed of your sins, you can make it known to us and we will baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's a song that we like to sing. I'm not going to sing it. I love the song, but it says, God will take care of you. It's found in 462. And it says, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Through the days of toil, when heart does fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fierce, your path is still, God will take care of you. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean, weary one, upon his breast. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. May the God add a blessing and hearers of the doers of this word. And I pray that it was something that I have said that might encourage you to look at God and Jesus Christ in a special way. As, as we are assigned a song that has, it's a song of encouragement. I pray that you will look at that song and remember anything that I said that will bring you peace and bring your heart to a point that you know that God 
will take care of you. Amen.